Hey YouTube, welcome to the IPv4 Subnetting Mastery video series. Welcome to video 7. In this video, we will show you how to solve subnetting problems in the first and second octet. Then we will wrap up the series by tying everything back together to what we discussed in the first video. This is the subnetting cheat sheet we've been using for the first 6 videos. In the last video, we extended the cheat sheet to include the CIDR values for the third octet. To extend to the second and first octet, we will simply continue the process. We ended with slash 17, so we will continue with slash 16 through slash 9 for the second octet, and slash 8 through slash 1 for the first octet. Our first example will be a subnetting problem in the second octet. We will solve all seven attributes for 10.50.111.222 slash 12. If you watched the last video, you'll understand the process to use this cheat sheet for any octet is nearly identical. You just have to be mindful of which octet you are in. As always, we will start by using the provided CIDR value of slash 12 to find our column in the cheat sheet. Then, we will use the column to determine the subnet value, which is 240. Since the problem we are solving for is in the second octet, 240 will appear in the second octet. Then we will use the group size of 16 to increment in the relevant column, starting from dot zero. Since the slash 12 is in the second octet, our increment will also be in the second octet. So we will have dot zero, dot 16, dot 32, dot 48, dot 64, and at this point we've passed our target value of 50. We can bring down the appropriate values for the remaining octets. Each octet to the left of our increment is inherited from above, and each octet to the right is zero. And from here, the process to fill in the seven attributes is the same as we've done many times before. And that is how to use the same cheat sheet and steps to solve for subnetting problems in the second octet. Next, we'll do a subnetting problem in the first octet. We will solve all subnetting attributes for 10.50.111.222 slash 7. The process starts the same. The slash 7 gives us our column, and the column gives us our subnet mask value of 254. Since the slash 7 is in the first octet, this value will appear in the first octet. Every octet to the right will be 0. Next, we will use the group size of 2 to increment from 0 in the first octet until we pass our target of 10, giving us 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. We can now fill in the remaining octets, and at this point we've done the hard part, and can simply fill in the appropriate attributes, adding or subtracting one as necessary. And just like that, we've solved the subnetting problem in the first octet in less than a minute. Okay, we've reached the final problem. This one will hopefully tie everything back together to what you learned back in video 1. We will solve all seven attributes for 213.50.111.222 slash 2. As before, the cider of slash 2 gives us our column in the cheat sheet. And the column gives us the subnet mask value of 192, which appears in the first octet since this is a slash 2. We'll then increment in sets of our group size of 64 in the first octet until we pass our target IP, giving us 0, 64, 128, 192, 256. But wait! 256 is not a valid value for an IPv4 address. We also can't exactly increase the next octet because there is no octet before the first. So let's talk about what is happening with this problem. This is every IP address in the IPv4 internet, starting from 0.0.0.0, .0 through 255.255.255.255. This is referred to as a slash zero network and includes all 4.2 billion addresses in IPv4. If we were to break up the entire internet into two parts, we would have two equal slash one subnetworks. If we were to break up each of those into two parts, we would have a total of four equal slash two networks. When we were doing our increments of 64, we were simply listing out the first IP address in each slash two subnetwork. The specific IP address we were solving for exists in the fourth block. We were successfully able to identify the network ID, which is the first IP in the block. But you'll notice there is no slash 2 block after. This is the last slash 2 in the internet. Hence, there is no next network attribute possible. The last IP in the block serves as the broadcast IP address, and the IP addresses after and before the network ID and broadcast are our first and last host. To get the total number of IP addresses, we would simply take 32 minus 2, which is 30, and 2 to the power of 30 gives us approximately 1 billion addresses. And that is the solution for yet another subnetting problem. If you've watched every video in this series and were able to keep up with the concepts, you should be well on your way to becoming a subnetting master. But mastery doesn't come without practice though, so check out the end of video 4 for a link to a subnetting problem generator. 
Otherwise, I hope you have found the content of the Subnet Mastery video series helpful. If you've learned something, please spread the word and share this video series with your friends so they too can enjoy subnetting in a way that is simple, accurate, and fast.